comprehensive outdoors. So here's what we're doing today. About oh, a month ago, I bought my daughter a traditional recurve that was made out of fiberglass. Just went down to Sportsman's Warehouse and got it. It's got like uh, 30 pounds of 28 inches and her and I started to shoot it and have some fun. And I started to watch some videos and I've always hunted with a rifle. A long time ago, I did try using a compound bow to hunt blacktail, but that was short lived. Here's what I'm gonna try to do. Here's the question. I wanna know, is it possible for me? I mean, and I don't know anything. I have no bow building skills. I'm not a woodworker. I'm not a carpenter. <laughs> is it possible for the average guy like me to go down and get a piece of wood, right? I actually couldn't find a stave, but I got this piece of oak, got it at Home Depot. Can I build the bow? Can I build the string? Can I put my own knock on it? And shoot it and is it going to be fast enough where I can use it to hunt and then eventually can I shoot a deer with it so I'm going to try to do the whole thing I'm going to try to build a traditional longbow I'm going to try to make my own strings I'm going to use my own fur uh, string silencers from animals that I've harvested and this will just be a cool adventure let's get into it so this is a piece of oak that I purchased at Home Depot and from looking online, the one thing that you have to be very careful for, and they say is the number one most important thing, is to look at the grain. Make sure the grain runs all the way down the length of the bow, that the grain doesn't go like this and then run off. Same thing with the sides, okay? So I found this piece. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this out. Um, there's all sorts of information on the internet, but I am not a woodworker. And I'm just gonna use whatever I got in the shop. All right, the kind of design that I've decided on that's the, the easiest for beginner is called a pyramid uh, style bow. It's a pyramid design, and that's what I'm gonna go for and mark this bow out correctly uh, because that's also very important. All right, well, these marks that you see here, <clears throat> so this is a 64 inch bow, gotta cut the length. And this is the center of my bow, and I'm following a design where this will be uh, the arrow rest, and this is called a fade out. This is where the handle is going to slope gently into the bow. So that's what I got marked so far. I'm not real confident. Uh, as I think more and more about this, there's a whole lot of opportunities for me to screw this up, and I'm not exactly a carpenter. All right, let's keep going. Okay, center of the bow. That's where I'm going to start tapering. I come down to the end. This lower limb is 27 inches, and this upper limb is going to be just a hair longer, and it's supposed to be by about an inch and a half, because you have this extra space there for the handle. All right, all right. This is my eight-inch handle I'm going to glue on. Okay, here we go. All right, here's the bow roughed out a little more. That's the bottom limb right there. That's the bottom limb. And this will be the handle, and that's the top limb. Starting to take some shape. All right, back in the shop. As you can see I'm sweating pretty good. It's hot. I finally got this bow down, and I'm getting ready to put a backing on it. And I'm, <laughs> I still have my doubts that this thing's going to shoot. But that's the cool part. Let's see if we can do it. So apparently, when the wood is kiln drying like this, it gets dry very quick. Um, it can become brittle and snap, and it also will absorb glue. So I'm using this tight bond here, Ultimate 3. That's what all the bow guys use, so I'm just copying what they do. Lay a bunch of this down, let it soak into the wood, and then you put another layer down, and then I'll be putting my backing on the bow. So I'm using a fiberglass backing on this bow, and this is the first layer. Uh, it's a double layer. I'm going to put three double layers, so six layers. This is not my idea. Uh, I've just stole all the stuff off of YouTube. Right. First layer of fiberglass backing down to make sure that this bow is reinforced and it won't explode on me. Okay. I got the backing on my bow. That side's gonna get painted. I have started to rough out the handle, and I think the limbs, I'll have to work on those more, but I'm gonna start doing what's called the tillering process. Got a long way to go, man, a long way to go.
people if you're not sure what that big contraption is. <laughs> this is a tillering tree. This is where I start the very slow process of bending the limbs ever so slightly and looking to see how they bend. Doing a little flexing. All right, I'm on halfway to week two. So you can see I got the limbs down. I got the knock tapered. We're starting to get to the point where I need to take my regular tilling string off and put on an actual bowstring. And I made this one. You can see I got the Flemish twist on one knot, on one end. This is where I'll put a Boyer's knot. Here's the middle of the string where the serving goes. And then this is a knock loop. It took me about three hours, a couple of YouTube videos, <laughs> and about five or six tries to figure out how to make this. But here we go. Let's put this string on it and see um, what the bow looks like on the tilling tree. All right, we've got the tilling tree with a real string on it. Let's see what happens. Let's see how this thing bends. All right, we did it, here it is. I got a bow, 64 inches long. It looks like it's about 43 pounds at 28 inches, which is my draw length. I got an arrow shelf cut into it, right? And the next thing we have to do is build a string and uh, take the chilling string off, put a real string on this and go out and shoot it. It'll work, at least I didn't break it and I've gotten this far. Tune in next time if you wanna see this thing shoot. Thanks for watching Comprehensive Outdoors.